Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching PowerTech 10. Give me a few minutes of your time, and I will give you the benefit of 50 years of winning a race engine building and high performance street motors. The subject of today's video is pro prepped bearing clearances at home shop budget costs. So let's dive into episode two of this process. Well, the first thing we do is we clean a couple of bearings, make it the front and the back. I'm going to put you through a procedure which works out well, right? Do the front and the back and leave the rest spare. Make, make sure the crank is clean. All the journals are grease free. Also, the bearings, wipe them off and make sure they're grease free. Now, before you install any of the bearings, take a look at the back of a bearing and you'll see there's letters stamped on it. Quite often these letters are raised. So what I do is I very carefully take the raised lettering off. No more. Now to stop grains of, of steel from the bearing going everywhere, now this is a good move. A fine file and put a couple of powerful magnets on the back of it. All the grit from this and should you find you have to file these notches will stick to the file, it won't drop off anywhere else. When you put the file down, stick it over a trash can. So, okay, we're now ready to uh, get this bearing loaded into the mains cap. Now wipe it all off. Oh, make sure it's grease free. I use uh, lacquer thinner, right? It is a very powerful cleaner. Right, see, look at that, that's just come off the back of the bearing. Right, now, wipe the bearing. And these bearings have already been cleaned, by the way. So you wipe the bearing and the housing, and I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it again. Right, now we are now ready to put the bearing into the cap. Locate the tag first. Oh, make sure you've got a chamfer on the edge here as well. The reason for that is this here will act like a cutting tool for the last part of the bearing installation. We don't need that. So we locate the bearing, push on that there, and in it goes, just as smoothly as you please. Using a knife rather than scissors, cut yourself a piece of the plastic gauge and place it on the journal. Now, believe it or not, this is the hardest part, getting it to stay there. Now, place the cap on top of that and gently tap it into place. Insert bolts. After they're spun down, torque to 40 foot pounds. Right, let's set that. Here we go. Now 
Now undo the cap. Spin out the bolts. Give the cap a light tap. Once it's showing a gap, it gets much easier to just put a screwdriver in like so and take it off. Right, now we have an imprint on the crankshaft. So to find out what it is, we now measure that clearance with this gauge here. I'm looking for two and a half thousandths, right? Well, it's, it's just about 2.7 thousandths, right? Which is pretty close to where I measured it. So that's the technique we're doing. Now, had that been a thicker piece, and we could try this with the red, because it's within range, to see what it measures out with that. So let's do that now. Well, the red here should be easier to see. And I'm just sizing it up here, and it's, it's bigger than two and a half, but it's not quite three, right? So that kind of confirms what I had before about 2.7 thousandths, which is just a little bit more than I wanted. Normally, I'm looking for bearings like this, on a motor like this, I'm looking for two and a half thousandths of clearance, right? It can be up to three thousandths and that will do fine. Um, the reason that I don't like to have the bigger bearing clearance is that there's more oil swinging around. But anyway, let's wipe this off and install this cap. Well, at this stage of the procedure, I'm going to put the cap on for real, right? And it's going to stay there in this preliminary build. Now, at this point, many people will oil that, will lube this bearing and this with engine build lube which is typically a high viscosity uh, lubricant. I do not favor that. I use this here, which is a mix I've made myself. Let me show you. You see how visc uh, the low viscosity of it? That's because there's a lot of low viscosity stuff in it. Let me say what it's made of. Firstly, I use a good oil in this, and it's a mix of 30% oil, 65% WD-40, and 5% lacquer thinner. Now, this gives us a lubricant which is very good to find out, to see if everything runs as free as it should. So that's what I'm going to do, is put some of this onto the bearing and spin it. Let's just put some there and here. Like so. It's pretty runny stuff, this. And now we'll put the cap on. Let's make sure we get it right in the right way. And the bolts. Tap the cap in place. There we go. Spin the bolts down. Tap 
torque them up. This time to the 75. Just go about halfway on each one first. A bit more on this one. A bit more on that one. Right now all the way. And all the way. Right. Crank spins very nicely. Very smooth, and don't forget the back bearing is not lubed yet. And that's what we'll do now, is the back bearing, right? Our next move is to do the rear mains cap. Several things I need to, to, to point out to you here. First, the obvious ones, should make sure all these edges are chamfered here, all the oil um, um, seal groove is clean. Right, uh, chamfer this, uh, make sure this is spotless, and all that. Now, now we're going to use the red um, uh, plastic gauge here because the back bearing, the back bearing, calls for more clearance than the, the front four. So, GM calls for about two and a half to three, but sometimes I'll go as wide as three and a half because the back bearings can run a lot hotter so that extra oil cools it. I like to see about 3.2 but we'll see what that comes out as. One last point I want to show you before I button up this uh, cap procedure here is the fact that this here is all being ground out and blend it into here. This is where the oil pump mounts, right? And this allows the oil to pass from the pump down into here better. Uh, on s some blocks, this is so sh crowded here that just doing this mod is worth about four or five PSI. Anyway, let's put the, the bearing in. As usual, we have to make sure that it's spotlessly clean so that's a wipe over with lacquer thinner and by the way I've already done the back of this bearing right and we slip the bearing in like so turn that around and remember all these edges have been chamfered so it should go in easy but because of these thrust bearings, the back bearing won't distort. So you need to line it up here on the tag side, push it as far as it will go, right? And just to make sure that it's all the way in, just lightly tap, just there, there we go. Right, that's located. Now let's put our plastic gauge in place. Plastic gauge in place. And tap in place. Notice how easy that tapped down. Place in bolts, they've been pre-greased. And buzz them down. Torque to 40, 45 foot pounds. Undo. Zip the bolts out.
that with a hammer. Lift off and check clearance. Well, there we are. That is a shade over 3,000, so I'd say about 3.1. So we're right on the money for where I'd like to see it. Well, that brings us to the end of part two. And in part three, we'll find out just how incredibly freely the crank spins when we prep the bearings in the manner we've done so far.